Okay, before we even begin, um, spoilers, This, even though this is like a recap of Drum Island, kind of, we'll get into that in a moment, this contains so many spoilers for the series up until like post Ennis Lobby. So if you think this is just a recap of Drum Island in movie form, that's not it, Chief. Bloom and Winter is possibly the weirdest movie that I have seen so far because of how it plays with the canon itself. We've had a lot of One Piece movies that felt almost like filler. We had the Alabasta movie that felt like it was a recap of the Alabasta arc. But episode of Chopper plus Bloom in the Winter Miracle Sakura, it's a long name, we really have to shorten this name, is strange to me because it's not filler, kind of, but it's not a recap, also kind of. It is so utterly weird. And for that, we gotta talk about it. For all intensive purposes, I'm gonna call this movie Bloom in Winter, but in reality, this movie is a recap of Drum Island. And I have a theory, right? I feel like we wanted to do something similar to the Alabasta movie. Maybe it popped off. Maybe it was doing big numbers. Maybe we wanted to replicate that with another arc, like Drum Island, perhaps. But we had just gotten Frankie and Robin, and I feel like we really wanted to have them around, so we kind of threw them in to Drum Island and did that anyways. So what we're left with is what feels like someone who has only seen Drum Island through Google Images try to tell you what happened in this movie. And he saw that Frankie and Robin were in the Google Images, and I mean, like, clearly they're a part of the crew, so they must have been in Drum Island. And, uh, like, no, not Vivi, because, like, Vivi's a part of the desert biome, so she wouldn't be in the snow biome. And because Frankie and Robin were there, I thought they were gonna play a much more integral part into the story, but... They didn't, and that's kind of the weird thing. The more you think about this movie, the less any of it makes sense, and you just have to go with it. For example, in the beginning, the Straw Hats roll up to Drum Island, and everyone points a gun at them, and this is the scene where Vivi teaches Luffy how to be more humble and respectable as a leader. Except, now Vivi's not here anymore, so Luffy just instinctively knows to bow. And maybe you're thinking, well, this is post in a slobby Luffy, all right? Maybe he learned to be a little bit more humble and to care about his crew more. But if you think about it that way, is Drum Island ahead of Ennis Lobby? Did the Straw Hats go backwards in the Grand Line in search of a doctor? Were there, like, no doctors in Water 7? Right? This is so weird! And I think that this One Piece movie really just says, don't think about it. <laughs> Just don't think about all the complicated stuff. Just uh, enjoy funny rubber man being funny rubber man. So then, did I enjoy funny rubber man? Yeah, actually. And it's for a very weird reason, right? So we set up all of these expectations for an alt world where we have Frankie and Robin in here. But then we very quickly forget about it. We have them in the introduction and they interact with a few of the characters very lightly. And then Luffy has to carry Nami up the mountain, in which case we transition back into the traditional Drum Island arc. And we follow that beat for beat again. When I watched the Alabasta movie, I thought it was charming. I thought it was cute, but I didn't think it reached the same heights that the Alabasta arc reached. Simply because there is so much content that was stripped out of Alabasta that I don't think one hour could have fixed. But with a Drum Island movie, not only are we compressing a lot less down, I think we only have like 15 episodes to work with, still a lot, but it's a lot less than Alabasta. And this movie is also two hours long, so we get an extra half an hour to try to pace everything out correctly. And I think that leads to a situation where you have more time to breathe. Whether it was Zoro or Frankie beating up a pirate ship, Luffy trying to climb a giant mountain, Nami being sick, or Luffy holding the flag. There was still an awe that was carried through the animation and through the music that still was effective to me. I think because Drum Island is taking up a lot less space and there aren't as many beats to really hit in Drum Island as opposed to Alabasta, <laughs> I think the Drum Island movie was really able to pace itself a lot better than the Alabasta movie by prioritizing a lot of those beats. This movie made a lot of decisions on what it would want to cut out. Wapole doing all of the fusion things, we cut that out. Wapole eating the boat, we cut that out. How Nami got sick, we kind of cut that out. 
any connection to Little Garden or Alabasta or Crocodile, we strategically rewrote the entire arc. Also, the animation looks gorgeous, by the way. I don't know what they did. I want to say this is like a different art style than the art style that we see in Drum Island. It feels very similar to like, uh, maybe Zaba Odi? But I'm not really smart enough to describe why it looks different. It just feels different. And I'm too dumb to explain why. I think experiencing the normal Drum Island arc by itself will hit a lot harder. And yet, there were some scenes in here that were really beautiful when remastered. Uh, I don't know, look it up on YouTube or something. <laughs> or skip around to the good parts in that movie, I guess. Should he watch this movie? I, it's weird. <laughs> but I've seen the other movies. This is not the worst option.